Welcome to Beside the Burn for Wednesday the 4th of January. You join with us in this new series in Matthew's Gospel. We're reading through the Gospel together day by day, Monday to Friday. And we're finding out that the overall theme of this Gospel is Jesus the King and Jesus entering into his kingdom. Each day we're reading a passage slightly less than a chapter from the gospel and that means that we should be able to work our way through the whole of the gospel before we start our new series at Lent. Today we come to Matthew 2 and we're reading from verse 13 down to the end of the chapter. This involves Mary, Joseph and Jesus escaping to Egypt whenever Herod Uh, tries to kill them and then their return to Nazareth again and we're thinking about Jesus being the king and here King Herod feels threatened because Jesus has arrived and so he's doing all that he can to try and destroy this family. So let's read together uh, and then let's think about the Uh, what shines out from this passage. And uh, do remember, once again, that I'm not dealing with all of the passage. I'm not going into it in great detail. I just want to share that that light bulb moment, that thing from the passage that shines out to me. I'd encourage you to think about it as well. As uh, As I read through here, maybe something shines out to you. Make a note of that. Go back, have a think about it, meditate upon it and see what God is saying to you. But let's hear uh, Matthew 2, verse 13. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realised that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea, in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, And he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Amen. So as we read this passage, sometimes it gets overlooked in the whole nativity story because it's not a pleasant thought that Jesus had to escape for his life. We also make a big deal of the story whenever Mary and Joseph are travelling to Bethlehem for Jesus to be born. And we often think about uh, Mary and the trouble that she would have had travelling that distance. But here is another occasion where Mary and Joseph have to travel. And this time they're travelling with a young baby and they're going to a foreign country. We're not told what happened whenever they got to that country. They simply stayed there until Herod died. We're not told how they survived, how they were fed, how they lived. 
But God had led them to that place and they obeyed God and and they followed him. And so after the beauty of the nativity, this idea of Emmanuel, God coming and dwelling with us, we now have what seems like a disaster. But Herod and the escape to Egypt, we have to remember, is all part of God's plan. And it's all there to try and fulfil Jeremiah 31, verse 15, which is um, what's quoted for us in verse 18 of the passage. A voice is heard in Ramah weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. The prophecy was there in the book of Jeremiah. And If this particular part of the story hadn't happened, then the fulfilment of the prophecy wouldn't have happened. But God had it all planned. And what seems like disaster to us is often God's plan. And we therefore need to trust him that he knows what he's doing. God's plan of salvation cannot be stopped cannot be waylaid by things going wrong. And therefore, if we want to tell others something about this passage, well, it's a well-known story to be able to share with others whose lives haven't worked out the way that they had expected. To show others that there is hope in the most shocking and terrifying situations in life to remind others and indeed I suppose at times remind ourselves that when things don't work out God hasn't abandoned us he still has a plan and we can trust in him and rely upon him it appears at times that God's plan has gone wrong and we look at the world and we think that perhaps there isn't even a plan because everything seems so chaotic. But that is Satan's plan. He tries to hide God's plan by creating chaos and by creating problems and creating difficulties. But God has it all worked out. He fulfills the promises that he's made in scripture. He doesn't have to work something out at the last moment because he has a plan that is in place. And even whenever we think that we're far away from God, you think of Mary and Joseph having to go to Egypt, we realise that God is right with us. That's the, the whole point of the Christmas story, Emmanuel, God with us. We cannot run far enough away to escape from God or to leave him because he is always with us. This is a story of Jesus being a refugee. And it reminds us that there must have been those folk in Egypt who welcomed this family and provided for them and helped them. And it reminds us of the role that we need to be playing in the world today when there are refugees, those who have genuinely left their home country for fear of their lives and they need refuge and they need help. Jesus is referred to here as God's son in verse 15. And that reminds us that we are dealing once again with a king, the son of the the king of kings. And uh, in verse 23, we're reminded that they settled back down into Nazareth again. So we have responsibility to care and to provide for those who have had to flee, who need help. We can't judge those people. We can't look down upon them because they've had to leave their homes. We provide help. And we provide compassion. And this passage should warm our hearts to those who are in need. It should bring us comfort that God will provide for us and that he will care for us 
and that he will use us to care for others at times. And it means that as a church, we've got a responsibility to reach out to others with compassion. So let's pause for a moment and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have a plan for our salvation. We thank you that that plan is set in place and that nothing Satan can do will deviate you from that plan. And Lord, help us to trust in you. Help us to realise that you never leave us, but that you are always right beside us, leading us and guiding us. Help us, Lord, to trust completely in you. And Lord, may we know your compassion and your help and your love. Amen.